Welcome to Get Teched, my name's Elizabeth, and today we're gonna take the temperature of this room, and that room, and that room, and that room. I'm gonna show you how to build a network of inexpensive temperature sensors that can send data to a real-time dashboard. Let's get started. Before we dive in, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep bringing you quality content. Temperature and humidity are vital data in your lab, production line, kitchen, office, and even your home. You need something that's reliable, accurate, and affordable. You can buy expensive sensors, but if you're monitoring multiple rooms or locations, your expenses can start to skyrocket. I'll show you how to build your own sensors without breaking the bank. Let's start with what you'll need to build the sensors. First thing you need is a Raspberry Pi Zero WH. It's compact, powerful, inexpensive at $14, and has built-in Wi-Fi. You also need Raspberry Pi power supply to obviously power the Pi. This will set you back $8. You'll need a micro SD card so you can run the Raspbian operating system on the Pi, and that'll cost you $4. The DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. This is how we'll measure temperature and humidity. Sensor is extremely accurate and the humidity range goes from zero to 100%. It's easy to wire up since it doesn't require a resistor and it only costs you a whopping $5. Connectors, so you can connect from the temperature sensor to the Pi and you might even have some of these lying around your house, but it'll only set you back a couple bucks. And not totally necessary, but looks really good, a case for your Pi that's $6. So your total expenses minus the case and shipping and taxes comes to a total $31. Not bad. You can easily buy all of this stuff in bulk too, except for the Raspberry Pi Zero. You won't be able to find a vendor who will sell you more than one per Raspberry Pi rules. Is what it is. Let's talk about assembly. The DHT22 has three pins that you'll need to connect to the Pi. There's power, ground, and data. So you'll wanna connect the pin with the plus sign for power to pin two on the Pi. You'll connect the pin labeled minus for ground to pin six on the Pi. And you'll connect the pin labeled out for data to pin seven on the Pi. Your connection should look something like this. Now moving on to the software piece. I'll assume that this isn't the first time that you're setting up your Pi, but if it is, there's links in the description for how to set it up, install Raspbian, and get connected to the Wi-Fi. Once you have Raspbian installed and you're connected to the Wi-Fi, what we need to do is install the Adafruit DHT Python module onto the Pi. Open your command prompt and enter sudo pip install Adafruit underscore capital D capital H capital T. Now you have everything you need to communicate with the sensor. The final software piece is a way to monitor your data. I would suggest using a data visualization software like Initial State. That way, you have real-time access to your data, a historical log of it, and you have trigger alerts that will send based on a data threshold value. Students can sign up for the free tier with their EDU email address and the individual tier is $9.99 per month or $99 per year. Once you register an account, next thing we need to do is install the initial state Python streamer module. To do this, go into your command prompt and type in sudo pip install capital I, capital S, capital streamer. If you're using Python 3, you'll need to change that up a bit and actually enter pip3 install capital I, capital S, capital streamer. We have our operating system installed, along with our two Python modules for reading the sensor data and sending the data to initial state. Now we're ready for the full Python script. This script will read the DHT22 sensor, create an initial state data bucket, and send the data into that bucket. That way you'll have a real-time temperature and humidity dashboard. To create the Python script, type in nano tempsensor.py. This will open up the text editor, and from there, you'll copy and paste the code from the tutorial into the text editor. The only lines that you'll need to modify are lines 6 through 11. 
The only thing that's absolutely necessary for you to change is your initial state access key, which you can get from your account page. The other lines you can change if you want to, such as your bucket key, your bucket name, the minutes between readings, whether you want metric units, and the name of your sensor location. If you plan on running multiple sensors, you'll want to make the sensor location name specific so that you know what data you're seeing. Once you've made all your changes, save and exit the text editor using Control X, Y for yes. To run the script, type in nano tempsensor.py. Repeat this step for each sensor in Pi that you have. Once you have them all up and running, go to your initial state count and we can view the data. You'll have multiple sensor data in your dashboard, so you'll need to do a little organizing. What I did is I changed the temperature values to the thermometer gauge, I changed the humidity values to the liquid level gauge, and I created line graphs for the temperature. You can customize your tiles by picking out some colors for your graphs and gauges, laying them out as you see fit, and switching from light theme to dark theme. And with our new custom background feature, you can make your background look like the room that you're monitoring. So it can look like this background, or this background, or you can just have it be a pretty skyline like this. Wherever your imagination takes you, the possibilities are endless. With all of your pies up and running, you're gonna want a way to monitor each one and make sure that it is always up and running. You'll likely have pies running without a monitor or keyboard or mouse attached. That means you want your pie to boot and run the script automatically. You can use your initial state account to create a dashboard that'll monitor the process and the IP address for each Pi, all in one dashboard. You can even send that data to the dashboard with your temperature and humidity data. A detailed tutorial monitoring our project for the process and IP and setting up the Pi Zero WH to auto run on, with a Python script can be found at a link in the video description. Now you have a network of temperature sensors and a real-time monitor. Good job! If you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share with your friends. Comment below on what projects you want to see next and share your projects with us on Twitter. Until next time, stay cool.